So the very first thing you want to do before you pull or touch anything, you want to get a base level ground height of your vehicle. I measure from the base of the rim to the guard. Obviously the guard heights are different front to rear. So if you want to get a rake height, you can measure sill front to rear if you want to get that level. But as a measurement first, before you put the car, before you lift it up, because you're going to lose those heights forever, we'll get, get your heights between the, lower, the bottom of the rim and the, and the guard. So the next step from here is to jack the car up and then you want to measure the droop. So again, from the bottom of the rim to the guard, and then you can measure how much stroke then the, damp the factory damper has versus the, the coil over you're going. So you want to measure from the bottom of the rim to guard and check the overall droop of the car. So the, the next step from there would be to start pulling the wheels off and then pulling, pulling the factory shocks out. Uh, taking note of the step-by-step -step process of how to pull it out. So a coilover from us in some models, we will set the heights factory on what we would recommend as the factory height. Otherwise for most cars, because the spring rates are always changing, weights of the vehicles are always changing, we just have them set at a, at a, a rough base height. But I usually measure the length of the factory damper and then from there measure against my damper and then reduce off the spring rate versus how much droop you want to reduce from there. So I would say because the spring rate is usually heavier, I'd start as a static to have it 20 mil shorter than the factory damper to get it sitting at the factory height you're currently at. And then from there, reduce the height deeper to get the height you want. One thing I'd recommend is, especially if the coil the coilover rates are heavier than normal, uh, always run zero spring preload. Especially if you're up for like a Sylvia, if it has a seven kilo and a five kilo in the rear, you don't need to run spring preload. Unless you have a very, very short stroke damper, you don't need to activate a spring or preload it to make it work. The spring is a linear rate, it doesn't change. So only once we're going into lighter rates or we have helper springs, do we need to start playing with preload and this kind of thing. With our coilovers, we usually have a set sh maximum short length. So you're usually, pr usually pretty safe to, you can run them at a full low without worrying about guard contact. However, if you have the, the cheaper end of the spectrum and they're a lot shorter, uh, in that case, you might want to check block height where you would actually remove the spring, put the coilover in with the spring not fitted, and then jack the wheel up, chuck the wheel on, and make sure that the tyre isn't going to come in contact with any of your, any of your components. So depending on whether the shock has maybe 100 mil of travel, some shocks may have 150 mil of travel. We're trying to sit in the middle of this stroke. So we will put the, put the shock in just loose with the base height, base lock nut not locked, put the wheel on, and actually get a measurement halfway so if it's 100 mil of stroke you want to measure it 50 mil of droop and then from there measure the base height and get 50 mil higher than where you expect the ride height to be and then once that is done you can lock up the base nut and then from there you don't need to touch the base heights again and then from there once the car's on the ground you can trim heights with the spring adjustment. So the more adjustment there is in a coilover, the more adjusting there needs to be done to set the car up. So if you, if you do have just a fixed height and it's just the spring, that's gonna be much easier to set up. And with a base height, you can go backwards if you're doing the wrong thing. So we've, I've driven $8,000 coilovers that feel rubbish because someone's put too much spring preload and set the actual length of the shock too short. So it's very crucial to have a solid understanding and hopefully we can maybe cover that in another video is how to set up the travel of a car properly and make sure it's all sitting in, its, in the middle of its travel. Once you've got the coilovers in, one thing I've, I've mentioned before, but you always want to make sure that all the bushes and all the mounting points, if they're on any sort of travelling arc, they need to be done up at ride height. That's always recommended because these bushes store an energy and it increases both MBH as well as shortening the bush's life overall. Once you drop the car on the ground, you want to also roll the car out because if the car's just lowered on its tyres, it's actually not going to be sitting into its full travel and then get your guard heights. I see a lot of people where they'll, they'll check what the heights of the vehicle are and then go for a drive and then find it's lowered itself 10, 15 mil. So you can waste a lot of time chucking it on the ground, going, oh, it's not low enough, lowering it, taking it for a drive and then finding that you need to raise it again. So sometimes I will actually set the heights of the vehicle get a rough estimate, actually go for a drive for five, 10 minutes, and then come back in and then get an actual baseline of the heights from there. First thing I'd suggest with a test drive is always have the windows up. You, you don't hear, you can hear a lot more of the chassis vibrations if the windows are up. It's a, it's a giant echo chamber sort of in the, in the vehicle. So always drive with the windows up and pay attention to noises. The first thing, you don't go into your first corner trying to see just how fast it can go into the first corner with your new coilovers. Treat this as just a test run. to make sure that you've done up all your links properly, that everything's tight, that your, that your shocks are gonna be working correctly. 
and then from there separate from compression and rebound and try and see how the car is stepping up onto the road and how it's stepping down and that will give you an indication of whether the damper needs to be firmer, whether the spring needs to be softer and uh, you can get a much better baseline from there. So with the baseline coilovers for most a single way adjustment, all this is is an oil bypass where you can essentially just bypass the damper of oil to reduce the overall damping and response of the shock. With certain brands they can actually offer you a custom service where they can valve to a tyre or all different kinds of applications to give you the exact right damper for you because damper tuning goes a lot further than just choosing the right spring rate. Shockworks has 20, almost 20 years experience tuning for car companies globally, so we are a little bit more strict most of the time pending application uh, on, on ride and comfort because we're used to having 60 year old middle, middle management telling us that we need to take some of that ride texture out. So uh, yeah, we, we do put a little bit more emphasis, however a car like uh, a WRX or a, a Toyota Supra, those kind of cars I'm happy to have leave a little bit more ride texture into them because most of the time they're going to be a weekend driver that someone's going to drive harder more than not. However, we do have valve codes there so if someone does happen to want a comfort tune then that's, that's pretty easy to do as well. The thing with buying a coilover and even the coilover experience is the the ride and the actual the way the car handles is very subjective. I've taken two different customers of the same workshop in a car and one has said it's too hard and one has said it's too soft. So the thing with a suspension is it's a completely, in, in the OE world, it's referred to as a subjective evaluation because no two people feels the car in the exact same way. So the beauty of buying local is that you can have a coilover set to what you actually want rather than just having what a, a ride engineer overseas tells you the car should feel like. In a racing applications, there are seconds to be made in, in just suspension alone. You're changing the whole weight shift of a vehicle, you're changing how fast that tyre loads and that's one, of the most, that's one of the most crucial parts of setting up a race car is how evenly you spread the weight across the corners. So just by changing a tyre, you're changing how many g-forces the car can de develop, therefore you're changing how fast that tyre is loading. So having a coilover that's actually tuned for your car, whether it have a slightly different tyre, have a slightly different aero package, have even a slightly different power delivery, all of these can, things can have a massive input onto how the car then drives around the corner. So there's, there's seconds to be had in tuning a shock for a race car, and then there's also potholes to be removed from the roads with tuning for comfort. Where when we were tuning five years ago, we'd have a section of road where you'd pick up every second bump and now you're picking up every fourth. You can essentially delete bumps from the road if you can, if you can tune the shock correctly.